Hey, 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 and happy Mother's Day to all of the amazing and incredible mothers out there. This is your girl, Trell, and you have Jill on the other side there. And we are here for another episode of Crossroads Culture versus Christ. So you're probably wondering. <laughs> Got some technical difficulties there. Say it again, Joe. Can you hear me? I can well, hear I was you. Just saying, let's <clears throat> okay, cool. I'm excited to be here. Let's get this conversation going. Meet us at the crossroads. Absolutely. So listen, today we have a special Mother's Day message for you all. And we just uh, wanted to share something from my heart and, and just be transparent because we know that although today is Mother's Day, Jill, that everybody is not in the happiest of places, if you would. You know, we have uh, individuals that are desired to be mothers or desire to have additional children. We have individuals that um, have lost their mothers or don't have a healthy relationship with their mothers. So we can't just assume, right, that because today is Mother's Day that everybody is enjoying the bliss of Mother Day, uh, Mother's Day and the celebrations and things of that nature. So we wanted to you know, express our, our heartfelt uh, sy sympathy toward those that are in certain places and empathy for the stories that we can relate to for those that are in certain places as it pertains to Mother's, Mother's Day. So again, I'm Terrell Ravenel and I am the founder and CEO of Wives Who Win. And I help wives and wives in waiting to transform their lives so that they can be in a better position to transform the lives of those around them, starting with their spouses, their husband, their children, and so forth and so on. And I also am in the um, uh, lane of woman empowerment, if you would. But more than just being empowered, I help these women to just transform in different areas and aspects of their lives as well. So I'm very excited about the work that God has assigned to my hands. And I'm excited that I get to be here with my co-host, Jill, who is going to just tell you a little bit about who she is and what she has been called to do here in the earth. <laughs> Absolutely. Great intro, Trail. Love it. Yes. And honestly, even before I go there it's really impossible to empower people about marriage without that individual, you know, empowerment on both sides of the aisle, if you know what I mean. So onto that, which kind of crosswalks in part to what I do, I'm the founder and CEO of BE Transform Networks, a global kingdom movement, all about helping you to renew your mind so you can transform your life, really based on helping you to identify spiritual principles based off of biblical truths and apply those in your life so you can achieve success in the various modalities of life, whether that's your emotional, physical, mental, financial, in the various areas that we deal with day to day. So also, I would be remiss if I say, within that, it's just really an embodiment of transformation, personal transformation and self-leadership is really the starting point of all of that and where we're leading you to step into your calling and really be the person that God's called you to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, I, I was sharing earlier, you know, about the common struggles or just different things that individuals that are, are experiencing, you know, today, even on this Mother's Day. And this is not going to be a somber type of conversation. So I don't want anybody to think that, hey, Tamikia, um, but we do want to be raw and real and really just setting the stage of, of what mothers endure, right, Jill, even those mothers that are in waiting, uh, the things that they endure, you know, a lot of times, and especially in the Black community, we don't talk a lot about our struggles as well. I mean, the struggle is real and the struggle is there, but I, I feel like we don't really talk about some of the struggles and some of the things that we endure because we have this pressure, if you would, to represent as this strong Black woman, right? There's, there's this thing in um, research called strong Black uh, schema. Uh, you know, uh, the woman is looked as strong. She's looked at as a force. Uh, she's looked at as superwoman. You know, if she does endure any type of hardship or challenge, she is just uh, supposed to just, you know, get up and, and wipe her tears and keep going about her day. But we have to pause uh, for a moment because although those things are true and we do do those things, there are other things that we do experience. And sometimes it's not as easy to wipe away those tears and to just pray our way through it and, and keep it keep been moving. So, you know, there is uh, pressure from society. There's pressure from all in um, emotional, mental, physical that we all endure. And we're just going to talk about that a little bit really today uh, about mothers in waiting and navigating infertility, acceptance, and faith. 
So mothers in waiting, uh, navigating infertility, acceptance, and faith. And we're just going to share, you know, some of our personal journey as it pertains to motherhood and as it pertains to infertility and acceptance and then and walking in faith, right? Uh, because as you know, Jill and I are women of faith and there have been things in our lives as it pertains to motherhood and things of that nature um, that we have prayed for, believe God for, still believe in God for. Happy Mother's Day to you too, sis. And um, so how do you how do you navigate through those pressures or how do you navigate, I guess not really pressures, but how do you navigate through that journey um, when you feel that the, the thing you've been praying for and believe in God for and having faith in God for it has not happened, has not come to fruition or in the way that you desire for it too. Uh, many of you know, I do have a biological son, one biological son, but many don't know, uh, what many do not know is that I've experienced three miscarriages um, in the in between the year 2014 up until the year 2023. And some may feel that, it, okay, you are already a mom, you've already experienced motherhood and, and things of that nature. It should not be a big deal. I don't know, some, somebody might really think that, um, but that could be, you know, further from the truth because although you're still a mother, when you have a desire for more and more children of a bigger family and things of that nature, and it does not happen, but the exact opposite happened, and especially um, dealing with a traumatic event as such as a miscarriage and having to go through various uh, surgeries in order to um, properly miscarry a child, that can definitely um, have a toll on you, right? Your mental, your emotional, and also your physical. So Jill, you know, somebody might be asking, um, you know, how do, how do you deal uh, with the, the losses or how do you deal with um, the outcome when the very thing that you've been believing God for, you, pr you prepared your mind for, your body for, your heart for, your home for, um, does not happen. Uh, so are you able to just share um, anything as it pertains to that? Like how do you be supported and how do you support in that, um, in that type of journey? I definitely want to answer that question, but I also just before we even dive into that, I want to say, because like you, you've already started to, the conversation that kind of heightening the awareness that is an issue. I think I'll just talk about from where I come from in South Carolina. We see so many people having kids and it doesn't seem like infertility is, is an issue. <laughs> and it seems quite the opposite because it was common for people to have kids, at least growing up where I grew up in the, I believe in the black community at large. People have kids in high school, in college, um, just before 25 oftentimes, but there is a group of women, whether it's because of getting married later or just deciding to wait, or perhaps it just never happens um, that they're dealing with infertility. And it's oftentimes it's, it's a silent thing. And this is even a time for us just to heighten our awareness that sometimes when somebody doesn't have a child, it's not always by choice. Um, you know, to be fully transparent, I've never been pregnant in my life. Um, and that may not be obvious with some people, just because you don't have a child, I mean, you've never been pregnant and granted at times I was taking certain type of, you know, aids to help assist with that <laughs> and doing certain things to prevent that. But then it became a time when I got married that I desired to expect, we started that journey probably back in 2015 and it just never happened. So I just want to one again, heighten the awareness uh, of that. And I'm, I'm probably going to need you to ask your question again, because I kind of get that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to add on, on that a little bit, and that's, I just want to be very honest too, right here, because when you were saying that where we come from, you see people that have children and, and that's not an issue. And I can be honest with you, I've seen people where, and I guess this has been judgmental on my end. I've seen people where I felt, um, I guess didn't deserve to have children. And what I mean by that, like that, like women that were not taking care of the children that they had, um, women that were not in uh, the best position physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or financially to have children, but it seemed like they didn't have any problem, you know, continue to have children. So, you know, even along my journey, Jill, uh, you know, God had to continue to deal with my heart regarding that, not being envious or, or jealous of those women or um, feeling like that they didn't deserve it, but just understanding what God had for my life. So I just wanted to add that to it as well, because people see you and they feel like, you know, you may not have any of these things, these issues, these struggles, mental struggles, mind struggles, thought processes, and things of that nature that you deal with. But the further 
I mean, that, you know, that can be further from the truth because we are all human beings and we're going to have human uh, experiences. So the question was, you know, um, how do you support someone on that journey, uh, you know, when they are dealing with infertility or dealing with a uh, second time infertility? Because that is a thing. You know, some people have a, a child and then when they're desiring to get pregnant again, such as myself, they consider that like a second uh, fertility. So how do you support someone or be or and or be supported uh, if you're on that? journey the way you support somebody's first avoid making assumptions avoid making assumptions that people are intentionally delaying that people don't want kids or that they're preventing it because a lot of times that question comes up oh when y'all having kids especially for people that don't have it so most women that i know desire to be mothers um, so with that, I would say the first thing is the way you support it is don't make an assumption. So even in your well intentions of just asking a question like that can be to some degree insensitive because you don't know the nature around it. So before just kind of popping off with that question, you may want to, you know, kind of get a pulse and, and maybe you can still ask, but I'm just saying be very gentle in that and don't make the assumption or assert of, oh, why you're not having a kid yet? Because a lot of times people can't help it. So that's how you can support. If you are aware of it, just keep them lifted and understand what their goals and plans are and support them in that. And just encourage them to keep the faith and believe because God is a, a powerful God and he can do so many things. And into that, I want to speak to those who are believing for their friends themselves to understand that although I know, as myself, I will love to have child through, you know, natural means and all the things um, and be able to carry that child myself and all the things. And I believe that that is God's will for my life. At the same time, God, the way we in, be introduced to motherhood may not always be traditional. And so we get to be accepting of that as well. There's so many amazing moms that are mothers by way of adoption, by way of taking care of somebody else's ch child in their family that maybe that person wasn't able to take care of by way of being a godmother. And there's other ways. So I would say that even in us believing God, even by way of the step parent, my God, I know some people that are step parents or bonus moms, however you want to call it. And they are just so blessed, so grateful to have that connection and that bond. So don't think that you have to go through a physical birthing to be a mother because that is absolutely not a qualification. We all know no shade, no tea. Some people that have birth kids are very far from being mothers because of whatever limitations or things that they may be dealing with or may not have the mental, emotional capacity to do so. Um, and the opposite is also true. So we don't want to be, don't let's not limit God. God may bless you through a natural birth or through some type of supplemental process, through surrogacy, uh, through being a step parent to you, maybe your partner who already has children, maybe somebody in your family, an opportunity for adoption or even foster care. There's just so many ways that we can be mothers and we have to really understand what is the point. What's the purpose behind that? And let me say this one thing and I'm gonna pass the mic back to trail. Don't make the mistake to believe that your legacy is caught up in having children because i know i used to believe that like oh my, my legacy to carry on yada 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 in the words of my aunt so well paraphrase that she said to oprah like you know her, her legacy she don't know what her legacy is going to be but i think we will all agree that even though oprah didn't have any biological children her legacy will carry on for decades, centuries, if not, you know, that will carry on because of not just her birthing a child or being a mother, but because of the impact and the intentionality she has lived her life with. So I've said a lot trail on that, but um, yeah. that's what I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that um, perspective up about the legacy, because that is something that I believe uh, women and men alike uh, struggle with. You, you have to think about even Abraham before he had any, any children, 
God told him that he would be the father of many nations. His wife would be the mother of many nations. And we have to be accepting, you know, even in line with our podcast um, uh, title and it just, uh, you know, what we stand for culture versus Christ. We can't think of it in the same way that culture thinks about it. You know, their culture legacy is, you know, I get uh, a business or, you know, I have houses, I have cars and I leave those things to my children. But when we talk about our legacy, our legacy also includes our spiritual journey. Our legacy includes discipleship. So whether that's discipling our own biological children or other children's, whether we have other sons and daughters in the faith, whether we are spiritual mothers and fathers in the faith and discipling and uh, mentoring um, other other individuals in the faith. So we have to look at it from that perspective as well and not get caught up in what the world's ideology is when it comes to legacy, when it comes to children, when it comes to family, you know, and we have to really be um, understanding too, Jill, you know, when people do not classify a husband and wife as um, not necessarily understanding, but we have to correct that. That's what I want to say. When individuals do not classify a husband and a wife as a family, you know, that is a pair, any two or more that is considered a family, but you will see uh, sometimes just the language and what we're used to and our, our ideologies and our perspectives um, tend to shift to the world. And we have these thought processes and we say these things and we don't understand the impact that it has on a family unit. A family unit, again, is two or more. It does not necessarily include children, but that's what societal's um, definition and perspective is as it pertains to children. So, you know, this could be an emotional roller coaster for anybody, you know, hoping and believing and you know, constant disappointment. But I love what you said, Jill. We have to get to that place where we are acceptance. And one thing as believers, we do have faith. You know, the word of God tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, but evidence of things not yet seen. So uh, Psalms 113 and 9 says, he gives the childless woman a family making her a happy mother. Praise ye the Lord. So we have to, we as believers, how we find comfort in, in, in being supported in addition to all what you spoke about, Jill, is also through the word of God, you know, adopting other family, adopting other family members and um, changing our mindset on what our family dynamic would, would want, what is going to look like. You mentioned adoption. You mentioned being um, a, a step parent, um, you know, even being a God parent and things of that nature. I feel like if we learn how to appreciate those different roles, um, then the things that we do not have per se or have not yet come to flourishing or manifestation would not be so heightened in our lives. I feel like we get caught up in what society and what culture says that we should have, who we should be, what our family should look like. And I believe that drives our desire even more. I'm not saying you should not desire children. I'm not saying you not, should not desire a family unit where there's more than you and your spouse. But what I am saying is that we should be very careful and not getting caught up and drawn into what the societal picture is of a family uh, or, or of children. Um, children is just not of blood. So we can be more open to that. And if we can lean into those other relationships as godparents, as aunties, as step parents, and things of that nature, I feel that the fulfillment and things that we are looking for, you know, it will be fulfilled in those areas. And we have to also, I'm going to say this, last thing. Look at even the children in our church that may be misparented in our communities, in our neighborhoods that may be misparented. What do you mean by misparented? Well, children that may have a detached relationship from their father or their mother. The, the, you, you know for a fact that these relationships may not be as healthy between parent and child. What if you adopted unofficially that child, you know, um, helping them to get to school on time or, you know, taking them shopping for, for groceries, teaching them life lessons and skill um, skills and things of that nature. You can also serve as a quote unquote mother or mother figure to that child. But I believe, Joe, we don't think outside that box because we're thinking about what we want and the picture of what that picture should look like and what society says and what culture classifies. And we tend to not think about all of the other amazing opportunities that God has given us to steward well other children within our communities, churches, and in, in our families. Absolutely. And it's actually a very essential role because you don't, you can never underestimate how one encounter, conversation, a season can totally change the trajectory of a child's life. And then we don't know what that child's then going to go out and do and the impact that they're going to make as a result of the encounter, the season. 
the influence that you have. So I believe anytime we're pouring into mankind that we're doing in a positive way and, and especially with biblical truths and such, we're doing the work of the Lord and everything we do for God, we can't discount it. We don't ever want to discount what we're doing for God. Nothing we do for God is small. So in those moments, see yourself as a carrier of, of the faith, of, of a carrier of, of, of truth, um, of carrier of vision, a carrier of just so much. There's, um, you know, a lot of times we use analogy of when you're birthing something of like, oh, you're, you're, you're pregnant or you're in the trimester. But all of that is a level of, of, of um, carrying. And, and we're constantly just even carrying our light and carrying our salt. And that's still something really big to carry because I believe given life is, oh God, it's just isn't limited to uh, the physical manifestation, right? It's really, you can give life by your light and the salt that you give and, 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 and empower people to live because the truth of the matter is so many people are living, but not living. People are existing, but they're not living. And sometimes we can be that catalyst to help them um, by the light we carry and, 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 and pouring in and nurturing in that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and what we're not saying, we're not saying ignore that desire. We're not saying pretend um, you are not sad. Pretend you're not sad. Pretend you're not disappointed because that would just be, you know, ignorant on both of our ends is to say something like that and, and we would be oblivious to what you're feeling and what you're hoping for but what I do know um, is that the word of God tells us that God gives us the desires of our heart and I believe we talked about that scripture in particular on another uh, segment Jill and and what we have to do though we have to ensure that our desires are in line with his desires because many times yes we do desire things but we don't know if those desires necessarily are the desires that God has for us. This could be our own biological children that we birth or any other thing that we want and desire. So we have to make sure that God, you know, yes, you may desire for me to have children, but do I have to have children by my own means out of my own womb? Do I have to carry that child or, you know, are there other avenues of which you will allow me to do that in order for me to still have um, for this desire to come into manifestation? You know, we are um, dealing with the biological can you hear me go ahead now i can oh the biological aspect of what happens to the human body the physiological aspect of what, what happens to the human mind the environmental aspect that that would happen so there are so many factors that must be weighed as it pertains to anything that we're asking god to do but what i do believe i'm just say this last thing and we can start wrapping up here is that you know when we find ourselves um in a moment of despair or hopelessness or helplessness we will always be able to find that comfort in jesus and if you're here and you're like, well, I hear you, Trill, but I'm not really, I'm saved or I know God or I have a relationship with him or, or I go to church, but I don't really know him as my comforter. I really don't know him as my savior. I really don't know him as my, you know, my helper. Then I would encourage you to seek the scriptures on those very things, to do a short study on those things. What, is this, what does it mean? You know, we have Google nowadays, which is an absolute blessing because we can find and research anything on Google, including scripture and, and what it means in the context and all that stuff and be able to understand who God is to you. So if you begin to start, sort out the scriptures or seek out the scriptures, if you would, and finding out what does it mean for God to be a comforter? What does it mean for God to be a helper? What does it mean for him to be there in my time of need? What does it mean for him to give me perfect peace? And those things, I believe if you meditate on the word and you meditate on, on his promises for your life, that you will find that comfort and that hope. And then also finding community, uh, getting that community support. You may need spiritual guidance. You may need um, some level of counseling and all of those things are okay to help you. You know, a lot of times in these struggles or these challenges, we're looking for the pain or the feeling to be taken away, but it's not always Jill, about it being taken away. We need to learn how to manage. How do I manage being in this struggle? How do I manage and cope being in this place where my where all my prayers um, or the, all the things I want are not here yet, or, or I feel like my prayers are not being answered. Instead of wanting the pain to be stripped away, or God, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to you know, experience this. What if you say, well, God, help 
me to process this, help me to manage this difficult and uncertain period in my life. Instead of me asking you to, to do it now, fix it now, or to take it away, help me to be able to manage in the midst of, uh, of what I'm dealing with or what I'm enduring. That's good because that's real. A, a lot of times the only way out is through and we get to go through things. God never told us that this life would be easy and we would not have troubles. That was never part of the agreement. Uh, but before we wrap up, there's two things I want to touch on. And one, in the spirit of us talking about from the beginning of the conversation, we said, how can others be more supportive? Um, <clears throat> I also want to say we can be supportive. I want to revisit that for a second. We can be supportive by acknowledging when people have shared a journey with us, um, that pain or, or the difficulty that's maybe with that. So I I believe in demonstrating and leading by example. So I'll do that in this moment. I just want to say to you, Trey, you shared that you experienced miscarriages. And I just want to say, I can only imagine, you know, how that is to be expecting and then that not happen. And not just one time, but on a number of occasions. So I just want to encourage you to keep the faith and know that God indeed is a promise keeper and that he's not like man, that he shall not lie and that God's got you, that God's got you and just keep on believing that, you know what? He, I, yeah, he, he, God's going to do something truly amazing for you and your husband. So okay. that's what I want to share with you. Thank you. And, um, I also want to say uh, there are a lot of programs out there to help women with fertility, some natural means and some, um, I guess you could say artificial for the lack of a better word, or let's use medical. There's some natural means and then there's some medical means that's out there. I know even when the Ashanti had got pregnant and some people posted, and I believe that it was posted in the experience, in the spirit of, hey, you can have a baby at any age. But it didn't it didn't land well because one we don't know what Ashanti did to get pregnant whether she had and I I don't know this is not a speculation or anything I'm just saying these are all possibilities sometimes women are able to freeze their eggs and if you're 35 or younger and you want child and you really don't have prospects in, in sight you, you should go get your eggs checked there's actually a way that you can do that to check the number and strength of your eggs through your gynecologist and you know obstetrician gynecologist and, and I, I definitely encourage that but, but going back to the ashanti thing that that got a little haste because it was like for the reason i said we didn't know what she did we don't know if she even has somebody she's carrying somebody else's egg um if she used artificial insemination i know they end up her and nelly end up becoming like co-owners of some type of at-home fertility uh, at home um what is it called when you um are fertile <laughs> i can't call it right now but whatever that is woman test to see how fertile they are she was doing some type of at-home test to help with that so um we just never know people's situation but there are so many like i said medical and natural remedies and i do encourage you to take it. Um, I, I didn't get a lot into my story, but I remember when I was working with a doctor and they allowed me to go through the process of checking things like your follicles. They were checking my FSH follicles. And and LSA, yeah. yeah. Like and hormones and FSH follicle. Yeah. Oh, you talk, yeah, that's hormonal hormones. level. Yeah. So those are hormonal level tests. But in addition to that, once I was starting to try to see if I had any viable eggs, mm, okay. um, they was checking like the follicle levels. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of things I was doing from a natural perspective and a lot of self-care. It's a lot of self-care. So I always say this, and this is going to be the last thing, Trail, and pass my back to you. I really, truly believe that it never was God's design for women to work as hard and as much as we work today. And a lot of that causes a lot of our cortisol levels to go off, which really is a hormone that can cause our fertility to get off balance. And so with that, ladies, sometimes we need to just, and not just even for the spirit of fertility, just for the spirit of good health, going on our knees for us thinking that we can operate and move and put that much energy and effort into the things we're doing like men. We're not built for that, we never were. And so we sometimes need to understand what our capacity is as women. We don't need to compete with them. We're complementary in our roles and responsibilities and that's okay. And so sometimes if you are a woman in waiting, or you know, are you going to be this woman that want to be in good health? 
sometimes we just need to take some step back, take some things off our plate and not overdo it. We shouldn't be operating in this high stress, overwhelm, going a thousand miles per hour. It's not sustainable for a healthy life, period. And it definitely is not sustainable and it definitely inhibits or can inhibit, let me say that, can inhibit your ability to be more fertile. So that that's kind of what I want to say, um, just kind of as we wrap here, some things to keep in mind and, and to keep the faith and know that it may not happen overnight, um, but just continue to believe God for what you what he's promised you and what you believe in. Then. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, uh, except what God allows and do not allow the enemy to make you believe, think, or feel that because it did not happen or has not happened yet or is not happening in the way that you think it should, that God doesn't love you because that's what the enemy would try to make you feel. Well, if there was a God or why hasn't God done this for you, you know, look at Hannah and, and look at Sarah and look at all the other Rebecca and all the other people that were able to give birth, you know, what's wrong with you. So don't allow the voice of the enemy to make you feel or think that God doesn't love you, that God does not want to answer your prayer. And I'm going to say this, you know, I, I said it before, I want you to really hear me, you know, look for other opportunities to step up and be a mother. If you're waiting, if it has not happened, if, you know, age is passing, whatever, Look for other areas and opportunities to be mother. There's so many children out here that need mothers. They need mother figures. And if we can't step out and step up for somebody else's child, what makes us think that we would be able to be that for our own? That's what I would say. Absolutely. And that's just kind of like, um, don't be getting ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And that is a level of preparation. Um, it truly is. So I think this has been a good conversation. We've been working to keep it a little shorter um, in, in the spirit of Mother's Day. So I know Charles already said it. Let me say it. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that's out there, whether you're biological, surrogate, godmother, aunties, because listen, I know y'all be out here pulling the weights, okay? <laughs> and holding it down. So Absolutely. We see you. I see you. We acknowledge you. Bonus moms, stepmoms, all the things. You are valued you are a godsend and continue to do what you do um, and, and make sure you take care of the most important person on this planet, which is you, because you got to you get to pour from your overflow. And the only way you do that is to make sure that your cup is full for us. Absolutely. All right. So you all be blessed. We will see you back here on next Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do want to make a couple announcements. If you're in the DMV area, be on the lookout for uh, an event that will be hosted this month. Uh, so we're calling women out to that. And also be on the lookout for wife chat and chew uh, and self-care. That's going to be happening sometime this summer. I'm thinking the date is going to be July 6th, either July 6th in Charleston or sometime in August. So be on the lookout for those things that are happening in and around the community. Um, so you all can come and join us and be blessed and, and transform your lives. So yeah, that's it. That's all. Have a good night. <laughs> Have a blessed day. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.